Hello everyone, it's Paul here. It's, uh, what's that, the uh, Wednesday 3rd of uh, June. I'm, I'm back from a, a couple of weeks away on a holiday, so I thought I'd just do a quick update video for all of those on the uh, Veterans Trader Project. Just a quick look at a few charts, just, you know, keep keep things ticking over, get your head back in the game if, you've, if like me, you've been away for a couple of weeks. So uh, just nice and simple, a bit of analysis. Hopefully something will give you something to, to look at yourselves. So uh, here we go, let's start with, uh, let's start with the DAX here, okay? This is the, the German index, DAX 30. Okay, uh, you can see it's been in a uh, you know a really very nice uptrend there, wasn't it? You know from uh, basically October of last year. Okay, it basically it trended up nicely. If you were if you were you know a person who wanted to draw a trend line, you could uh, draw yourself a very uh, a very kind of uh, interesting trend line there. Okay, we've got to touches all the way along up here. Okay, and and it's just broken. But um, what I'm kind of interested in is uh, you know all right, what we have is the the, the 20s crossed the the 50s. So prices in between the 50 and the uh, uh, it's in between the 50, the 20, and the 200, so it's a little bit messy. It's it's a bit choppy at the moment. And what I start to look at is, well, what is price action starting to tell me? Well, you know, we 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 had a clear high there, clear all-time high there. Then what I'm looking at here is what the fractals telling us that there was, you know, there was another set of highs there, and then basically, you know, we had another fractal there, okay, with the also with a bearish engulfing candle there, okay, so. Well, that's telling me is remember, you know, we've got basically, you know, each of these highs is lower than the previous one. So price structure at the moment is starting to put a bit of pressure on. And then I'm really, I'm looking at my levels of support and resistance, aren't I? Here we go. This is what, about 11,300 to 11,230. Okay, just this little zone here. I'm kind of interested in that. It's a little space there. Uh, and my opinion is, you know, if it, if it bounces off there, well, then what do I need to see it do? Well, I need to see it get back above the 50, and then I need to see it get back above this high, and then I need to see it assaulting these highs, and that would tell me that the, uh, the you know, the, the uptrend is back in place. Alternatively, what am I interested in? Well, you know, if it breaks this level, this zone here, okay, if it breaks this zone, starts closing, you know, beneath that, below the 11200 level, okay, then I'm kind of going to be interested in watching it maybe zigzag its way all the way down to about 10500. That is what I would uh, think. I think the, uh, uh, the the 200 would act as a kind of a, a dynamic level of support. As, as we know, these things rarely sort of, uh, you know, rarely go in uh, in, in, a, in a straight line. You know, hopefully you'd realize that by now, okay? So you know what you know you can maybe expect some kind of price action like that and see how it works. Clearly, a lot of this is also going to be uh, um, you know dictated by what happens over the uh, a the the sort of a European announcements and also the, uh, um, the 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 NFP, but also really about Greece. Okay, that's what this is all holding out about. So just uh, keep an eye on that. Okay, hopefully you can see how you can. Um, it's a little bit chop at the moment, but we're, what we're going to maybe see is a start of a a little bit of uh, a, a direction in in that way. So, and um, whilst we're looking at a couple of the indices, let's have a look at the FTSE here, okay? FTSE, FTSE 100. Yeah. So, if I just go out to the monthly, okay, the monthly chart, okay, the, you know, if you look at the monthly chart, okay, the averages are all in alignment, prices, you know, churning its way up, okay, pushing its way up, all right? Not, nothing as, as, as nicely as the, the DAX or the American indices if you looked. But if we go down to like the weekly, you start to focus on, you know, the sort of the, the run up from, you know, April into the election has, uh, has been, um, it's been messy to say the least and, and if then I go down to the daily chart well you know there you go there's the daily chart ladies and gentlemen and, you know does, does that fill you with any kind of enthusiasm any kind of interest all right and any kind of excitement you know that is just pure chop there just pure chop all right it was just you know it's up one day down another it's it's really just an utterly choppy okay uh, and you know the, the simple thing is for this ladies and gentlemen is that, you know when charts are like that just leave them alone all right, don't leave like, Don't try and second guess them. Don't think you know best, okay? Because I, I guarantee the likelihood is you probably don't. So you know when markets are just choppy like that, just just ignore them. Just ignore them. Stay away from them. Let it break out, okay? Let it break out. Well, what you know? What would that consist of breaking? Well, realistically, then you're getting. He has to get back up above 780, doesn't it? 7,080. Okay, he needs to get back up and holding above there to, to you know really constitute a breakout. Or alternatively, you know, you're looking at it getting down below 6, 700. You know, there on the on the daily, all right? At the moment, in this particular zone, we're definitely between what what's that? Call that 6, 800, 6, 800 to to seven. 780 7080 that sort of you know it's, it's only like a, a what a 200 point range okay 280 point range but it's just it's just messy you know when it's messy just leave it don't don't try and don't try and fight it don't try and think you're smarter than it just just give it a just give it a miss okay 
Um, let's have a look at another couple quickly. Uh, here's Brent Oil, all right? Brent Oil, boom, you can see the downtrend, all right? Way below its averages, just every time it pulled back to the 20, you can see it actually, you know, little pullback rolls over, okay? And you've got either like pin bars or engulfing bars, etc., that are just giving you that as it, as it pulls back. We then get a kind of, you know, a triangle uh, triangle reversal, okay? That's that's very clear in hindsight. I don't think well, back then there was many people calling for it to, to rise as it has, but you can clearly see it has. And once again, all right, prices prices in between the averages here. But what I'm kind of interested in is, you know, we had a, you know, we had a low here, and then basically these highs here, okay. You know, my apologies, these lows are higher. These lows are higher, okay. Uh, and then what we had over the last sort of uh, over the last month, really, this is the daily chart. We've had a bit of a flag pattern, okay. A bit of a flag pattern showing up, and, and you know, it's kind of finishing there nicely with a kind of a bullish bullish pin bar as well. So uh, uh, people who like pin bars within flag patterns um would uh, would be getting a little bit excited about that you know what my uh, interest would be as well okay does it get above what's that about 66 is it so, yeah, about 65 80 get above there and then realistically you know you're looking at well is there a way that that you can trade that up to the the recent high in the 200 because if that's where it's going that's going to be the next big major level of resistance is there a way that there's a trade to be placed on there that will also actually allow you to, to have a proper reward to risk okay it's no use you risking it's no use you risking what call that 65 down there's no use you risking really seven dollars to, to to make five dollars okay now that's not really that's not the smart way of trade that's not the way you know that's not the way of of, of torture okay it's about okay have a look at the price action and is there a way that you can take a trade that gives you you know a good reward to risk and allows you to to move in that but that's definitely something to, to keep a little look on um uh, as always i like you to have a little look at the uh have we got the s p 500 here okay this is on the um uh, here we go on the the, the the day let's have a look on the weekly oops just zoom that out boom oops there we go it's uh shot away all right the weekly chart okay the s p 500 it's still going up that, that's it all right it's not going up with any kind of gusto it's uh it's, it's a little bit uh it's a little bit struggling, but look at that, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's it's still you still can tell the direction it's going in. If you know, if we go to, uh, you know, if you were to look at it under, I think I've got uh, Blaine's gift on this particular chart. I hope so, so we can have a look at it there. Okay, if you can try and find it, there you go. All right, that's it on the daily on, under the Blaine Gusta uh, Blaine's lift with the 50 and the 250. All right, for for you equity traders, okay, we are still, it's still, you know, we're still viable to buy, okay, we're still viable to buy. All right, that's that's what we look at. But um, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of actually taking a trade on it, all right, um, you know, I'd be keeping an eye on it at the moment because it's uh, it's not, uh, you know, nothing terribly exciting. What I'm going to finish off with a couple of just of the currencies, okay. And what I'm going to start with is this is the dollar index. Some of you may have heard of it, some may have read. This is a dollar index chart monthly what does it do is it just basically plots the dollar against a basket of currencies okay so against the euro etc what you can see is from last summer right we know we, we basically what we had here okay let's all go all the way back all right up to uh 2001 all right okay so uh, strangely enough uh you know we had a, a kind of a top at the end of 2001 okay you can all uh, draw your own deductions from what happened there in terms of uh, world history uh, and then basically the dollar sort of uh, collapsed all right the dollar collapsed here we had it okay this was the uh end here this was the uh uh, the, the crash okay this was the start of the crash and boom what happens to the dollar the dollar leapt up why did it leap up well because it was seen as a safe haven when everybody else was uh, you know everyone was fleeing for the door uh, and then for a few years we, we you know we, we you know we went back and actually it just you know, it just went into a tight range and then yellen came out last summer and said well you know we're going to probably look to 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 start to uh, raise rates in the US uh, and then we've seen just this huge move of dollar strength okay broke that wedge and off she went across the 200 closed really strongly the other side of it and went up now if you think about it you know if you look at that you know in, in terms of what's happened against the Aussie dollar the euro dollar dollar yen pound dollar against all the major basket currencies you can see for yourself that what we've seen is dollar strength across the board um, uh, and what actually happened is you know we've now got into a little bit of chop okay here the last uh, well effectively you know the last couple of months all right we've had people have taken a lot of nice profit here and now they're just sat here waiting for the next move and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have a little conversation about that another time right but if i look at that in terms of like the euro dollar okay well, interestingly, not surprising, the euro dollar in many ways is exactly the opposite of the dollar index. Well, it shouldn't really come as too much of a surprise. The euro makes up, I think, I think it might be something like 60% of the dollar index. So, um, you know, you can have a look at it there. But what happens here, you know, we've, we've got down to these levels and, you know, we're just in chop in the euro dollar. This is on the monthly. 
okay and, you know it's definitely these levels of support okay they kind of you know they're acting significant again if you look here on the weekly you know it, it brought in a little bit of a double bottom there but there's nothing really there to get you terribly you know excited saying oh bro you know I'm um, you know, and what we had was you know, double bottom here on the daily. It came moved up. It was in between the averages, and then it came back down. Okay, which I was wasn't really expecting. Um, I thought that would actually, I thought actually what would happen is the dollar would just go sideways for about a month or two over the summer, and then it would continue down. But it's um, I think there's basically there's been a um, uh, an element of dollar profit taking, uh, and also there's been a little bit of a, the kind of a sort of risk on risk off with the with the euro in terms of you know, a, you know a, in the words of the Clash song, you know, should I stay or should I go? Uh, and that's pretty much what the Euro uh, Greeks have been doing. They're sort of kind of singing that in the streets. Should I stay or should I go now? Um, and, and that's the kind of reaction we're, we're having. And uh, I'll just finish off with uh, Euro Sterling because it's close to my own heart. Look at that weekly chart. Okay, belief the average is dropping down once again. Just got it into it. It's, it's chop there. Okay. What happens is the end trends are always messy. Okay, now you can take that from me, all right? It's very rare that the ends of trends are, are, are sweet and pretty. They can be actually pretty messy and prolonged, okay? So that's why, you know, for, for new traders, I tell don't bother trying to trade reversals, okay? Because if you're trying to pick the end of a of a major, major dominant trend, the likelihood is that, you know, you're going to be wrong, okay? And, and actually, as you can see there, that's just messy. If I go down to the daily chart, okay, so it kind of double bottom there, hasn't it, all right? But I've been a bit surprised. I, I was pleased that, okay, we... We had this drop back down towards the 70 on a personal level, but of course over the last week we've had this move, and, and part of that has been Europe, and also part of that has been sort of the sterling and, and the uh, UK politics and some of the UK news. All right, so there you go. That went on a little bit longer than I thought, but I've not done one for a couple of weeks, so uh, uh, I thought I'd just do a little bit there. Hope you found that useful as always. Just you know, refer to your uh, to your 10 rules. Okay, start to just uh, get into doing those. Uh, um, analysis if you want me to look at something send me a picture okay and i'll happily do that and then until next time um, you know trade well ladies and gentlemen thanks